Hello, I'm Clarion from Clarion Call Fiber Arts, and today I'm going to show you my method for carding Angora fiber on a drum carter. My Angora fiber comes from the cutest English Angora bunny named Luna, who is lovingly cared for by my sister in upstate New York. Meet Luna! This is her at her fluffiest, taking in the afternoon sun. And this is her grooming herself halfway through shedding her coat. Luna naturally molts twice a year, and the excess fiber must be pulled off for her health. Otherwise, she could overheat, or she could get wool block from ingesting her own shedding fluff. This is the Angora fiber I'll be working with today. Uh, Angora is different than regular sheep's wool because the fibers are hollow. This makes Angora fiber lighter and finer, softer, warmer, and also more fragile than regular sheep's wool. Also, Angora bunnies don't secrete lanolin. Lanolin, for those who don't know, is the waxy substance secreted by wool-bearing animals, and it usually needs to be washed and processed out before you can use the wool. But because Angoras don't secrete lanolin, you can basically just pull it off their little bodies and start spinning. There's very little washing or prepping that needs to be done in order to be able to use their fiber. I've actually seen people just sitting there spinning their yarn right off their bunnies. It's so cool. I like to blend my Angora fiber with other fibers to help with the durability because it is such a fragile fiber and because pure uncut Angora and garments can be oppressively hot, so it's just better for everybody to blend it. <laughs> the first thing I learned when starting to work with Angora is that it's so light and fluffy that it's really hard to get it to do what you want, and it took a lot of trial and error for me to get this method to where it worked for me. And without further ado, I'm going to share this method with you and hopefully it'll help you too. Today I'll be blending this gray wool uh, with this Luna Angora. This is the base for my pink elephant colorway, which you can find for sale in my Etsy shop with the link below. The biggest hurdle I've found with drum carding Angora is that because the fibers are so fine, they really just want to get stuck in these carding teeth here, which poses a problem because then it can't comb through the way it needs to if the fiber is stuck in the teeth. Um, the, the drum carter naturally fi filters out undesirable bits of fiber, but I found that with the Angora, perfectly good fiber was getting caught in the liquor drum, and it was just going around and around and around, and it wasn't able to transfer from the liquor drum onto the big drum, which is what you want. So if you're like me, and this is a problem that you're having, here are a few general troubleshooting tips that helped me get through this. Um, first, make sure that the distance between your liquor drum and your big drum is correct. Now, I'm not a spokesperson for Brother, but their manual recommends that there should be about a credit card's width of distance in between the two drums. Uh, now, you have to find what works for you, but you can play around with this a little bit, and it will drastically affect your carter's efficiency. Now, pretend my fingers are teeth here. You don't want the uh, teeth to touch as you're turning the drums, but you don't want them to be too far apart either, because then they won't do anything. You just sort of have to find that nice balance in between the two. And like I said, Brother says this is a credit card's width distance away, but you'll find what works for you. Secondly, you want to make sure that you're feeding your fiber in slowly and evenly, and that you're not trying to shove too much fiber under the, the wheel at any one time, and you're not going too fast. In both cases, um, lumps of fiber will just go through the carter, and it won't hit the teeth evenly, and it won't card efficiently, which is really what you're what you're going for here so um, if you've done both of those things and you're still pulling your hair out super frustrated I highly recommend investing in a brush um, this is sold separately on brother's website as an accessory and when inserted here it helps pack down the fiber and um, make it evenly and orderly transfer from the liquor drum onto the big drum and it's and it almost completely solved the issue that I was having of the fiber staying on the liquor drum and not transferring onto the big drum um, so if you're ready to pull your hair out I highly recommend the brush it totally made all the difference for me so I'm going to start blending these fibers using the paint on method to start uh, in other words, instead of feeding the fiber through the carter this way I'm just going to put it directly onto the big drum first and for our purposes, I'm going to start with the stronger, more durable fiber first, which is this wool. Um, so putting this base layer of the more durable wool on first will help protect the Angora and prevent it from, well, mostly prevent it from sticking into the teeth. Um, it's certainly markedly better with having a layer of, um, of the durable wool on underneath. 
to act as a barrier between the angora and the teeth of the carter. So you just want to sort of hold the fiber gently relaxed in your grip and let the carter pull the pull the fibers out of your hand and as slowly and evenly you just want to try to make a nice even thin well as even as possible uh, layer underneath um, underneath the angora and even if it's not perfect that's okay it's still better than nothing so I think that's good. I'm gonna start, uh, put another layer of Angora on, or rather put the first layer on. Um, I find that it's easier to uh, put the Angora on evenly if you pull it apart a little bit. This is completely raw Angora fiber. It's just right off her body. Um, hasn't been processed at all. There's nothing been done to it. So um, a, little, a little opening up of the fiber helps a great deal. And you can notice that it's a little bit different trying to put the angora on than it was trying to put the wool on. It sort of has a mind of its own. It's a little bit more challenging. Um, but still, you want to hold it sort of in a relaxed grip if possible. And you just want to let the carter pull the, pull the fiber out gently. The angora fibers are slightly shorter than the wool fibers. And that's why I think it's a little bit harder to control the angora as opposed to the wool. Luna is a um, an indoor pet, so she doesn't have as much um, contact with vegetable matter as outdoor angora bunnies do. But of course, at this point, if you see any vegetable matter in your fiber, you'll want to pull that out. Um, just want to make sure that everything touches the teeth as evenly as possible. It's a lot more difficult than putting on just regular wool. But it's fine, it's, it all works out. You'll find what works best for you. Um, if, you have, if you're having trouble with the Angora sticking to your fingers, uh, I found that if you sort of spray your hands with some static guard, that will help the, the fiber getting stuck to you because of static cling. Um, and if it gets really bad, sometimes I've actually sprayed my drum carter with uh, static guard as well to try to keep the um, fiber out of the teeth because of the cling. And it works. It works a little bit. It's it's all it all adds adds up to a enjoyable experience. Hopefully. <laughs> okay, we're almost done here. I've just got this last little bit. It really is just so soft and fluffy. It's such it's such a pleasure to feel it going through your fingers. It almost, it's like little clouds just being put onto your drum carter. So enjoyable. Okay, so that's all the Angora. I'm gonna put another layer of this gray wool on top. Try to sandwich it in there. Um, having the, the durable wool on the top and the bottom will help prevent the Angora from sticking into the teeth as we send it through the carter uh, in the next pass. And this, um, this paint-on method mixed with um, the sandwiching method of durable uh, fiber on the top and the bottom with the finer, uh, finer fiber in the middle, this isn't just for Angora. You can use this technique on um, if you're blending cashmere or silk or bamboo, mohair, anything super fine that you want to blend with a, a, a heavier wool, um, putting a base layer and a, a top layer of the dur more durable wool um, will really help your carding experience be more enjoyable. So I'm, I've got some more fiber. I'm going to load up the drum carter and I will meet you back when it's time to take the bat off. So here's the drum loaded, uh, and it's time to take off the bat. Uh, I'm going to give it one more brush just to try to pack down the fibers a little more and make sure everything is nice and combed before we take the bat off. Um, next, I'm going to take my little poker, and I'm going to slide it along the metal ridge here and just sort of lift the fibers up and split them apart. There we go. Um, and just slide the bat off slowly. You can see that the gray is still sticking in the teeth a little bit. So I'm just going to use my little poker gently to slide it in between the teeth. 
I just want to use as much of the fiber as I possibly can. I hate wasting things. Um, and you can see the amount of, of that the gray is sticking in the teeth. It would be so much worse if the Angora were just straight on the teeth um, without this layer of gray on before that. So we definitely did the right thing, even though the gray is still sticking in a little bit. So here is our painted on bat. Um, you can see it needs another pass through. It's still very splotchy. I'm going to split the bat in half and feed it through the carter. You can see here that as we were doing the paint on method, um, a lot of the fiber ended up getting pulled off the big drum and put onto the liquor drum um, just as, as a result of the paint on method. And I, it might be short, it might not be ideal, but um, I want to try to use it. It looks so pretty and Luna worked so hard to make this for me that I just don't want to waste any of it. I want to use all of it. So anytime that you see the fiber just going onto the liquor drum, you can use this little brush to sort of encourage that it go, that it go onto the big drum. If you do see, see any spots like this where it's just a little lump or um, it's sticking out of the teeth, that's not usable, so I'm going to pull that out. Um, but those, those are the kind of lumps we'll be looking for. You'll want to draft your bat out. Because um, as we know, if you put too much fiber under the drum at any one time, it won't card as effectively. But under no circumstances should you pull on your fiber as you're turning the drum. Because that will for sure make the fiber turn around the liquor drum, stick to the liquor drum, and not go through onto the big drum. And since we're battling that already, we don't want to add to our misfortunes here. So you're just going to go nice and slowly. You can see, here it is, it's coming around the liquor drum without transferring to the big drum. I'm just going to take my little brush and encourage it, encourage it, Oop. and speak of the devil, there's a little lump that's not going to get carted out. Luna just has, a, from her day-to-day -day life, there are just things that cause lumps in her little fur. Nothing against her, that's just what happens with little bunnies. And it is going on pretty smoothly. All right. So I think you got the idea. I'm gonna go ahead and put the other half through and I'll meet you afterwards. Okay, so I've passed the other half through the drum carter and the full bat is on the drum. Um, I just wanna let you know that if you see any um, the lumps in the Angora, you can always take your brush and just give it a little extra comb before you take it off the bat. That just gives it a little bit extra love and encouragement to come out. Um, I'm going to take it off the drum here the same way we did before. Now that the, the gray and the Angora are a little bit more mixed, yet yeah, there's, it's sticking into the teeth just a little bit more than it was before, which is unfortunate, but expected. The Angora is just so fine. That's what happens. It's still better than if it was just Angora all by itself on the drum carter. Really doing my best to save as much Angora as I can. Okay. And here is our bat after going through the drum carter once. Um, you could stop at this point if you wanted to, if you like this sort of um, blotchy heathered look. Um, I think I'm gonna go for a more uniform uh, approach. Uh, I'd like my Angora to be a little bit more dispersed through the bat. So uh, I'm gonna pass it through one more time, I think, and then I will meet you at the end with our finished bat. Here's our finished bat of wool and Angora blend. I'm really happy with the Angora distribution. It's heathered, but it's still uniform enough that I think it's just gonna spin like a dream. And it's so soft and it's so luscious. And I just wish I could start spinning it right now. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope I helped all you fiber experimenters out there troubleshoot your carding approach to finer fibers. Remember, if at first you don't succeed, there's always a way to fix it. <laughs> if you like this video, hit the like button or you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. 
Feel free to follow me on Instagram at Clarion Call Fiber Arts for more fiber escapades, or you can visit my Etsy shop for handspun goodies, including the resulting yarn of this beauty we made today. I'll post the link below. Happy crafting!